Okay, so uh, just to sort of round out the components here, you have the AT Mega 16U2, you have the LEDs <clears throat> that indicate activity, you have serial in and out here, you have USB in and out here. This absolute mess of a design is the crystal. And what the crystal provides is a clock source. Now, there are different ways of providing a, a standardized sort of timing up and down signal to your chip that tells it every time this, this crystal blips, and this is a 16 megahertz crystal, so it's doing it 16 million times a second. Every time that crystal blips, it causes the microcontroller to execute another command. And that's how you have your microcontroller running at 16 megahertz. Or in the case of your, your laptop or your desktop, your, your PC, your Mac, that's how it's doing it at, at gigahertz speeds is through the, this, the speed of this oscillation here. There are some chips, including the, the AT Mega uh, 32 or 328, it does have an internal oscillator. It's not as precise as using an external crystal or an external oscillator, but that does mean that you don't necessarily need to include that component in a design. But in this case, they did because my assumption is that <clears throat> either A, it requires the use of an external oscillator for the 16U2 or more likely that you need to have a precise oscillator in order to handle the timing requirements of USB. And USB is very, very uh, timing centric. It's, you have to make sure that you've got a very solid oscillator source, very solid uh, uh, timing source in order to make sure that all of the USB components are talking uh, at the same rate and with the same rise time and fall time, which is a, a little bit uh, off topic. Gotcha. So what you're saying though, is that like the error bars basically on the internal oscillator may not have been solid enough for, you know, doing the USB. Okay. Correct. So they yeah. added the external one, but man, talk and about it may be that it doesn't, that their internal oscillator doesn't run fast enough.